This video is the third of four videos concerning a project to create a guidance nose cone to convert an unguided mortar into a precision guided munition. The concept is to clip the guidance head to an unguided mortar, and the guidance head contains a, a video camera, which is like an eyeball. Then targeting and guidance is provided either by AI target recognition on board, or a laser target designation, or by a remote operator. Specifically, these four videos are related to the autopilot design. And the autopilot converts a target position on a CCD array to fin position commands, which fly the mortar to hit a designated target. Now, there are three components to the autopilot, an azimuth autopilot, an elevation autopilot, and a roll autopilot. And this video deals with the roll autopilot. The roll autopilot is envisioned to operate in two phases. The first phase is called roll braking, in which the guidance fins are controlled to remove all rotation about the mortar's roll axis. And the second phase is called the roll alignment phase, in which the roll position of the mortar is adjusted so that gravity acts only in the elevation plane. Now, as in the previous video, this is a plan view of the mortar attack area. At the bottom right is an inset representing the guidance head CCD array, and it shows the target position on the CCD array during flight. So we can see the effect of the roll autopilot. And the roll autopilot is active immediately after the onboard inertial platform uh, detects uh, apogee has occurred. In other words, at the top of the ballistic flight trajectory when the round starts its descent. Now, in real life, the mortar is not expected to have a lot of roll motion since mortars don't usually use rifling. But in this simulation, there is roll to illustrate the principles. So now let's launch the mortar and see what happens. The target inscribes a circle on the CCD array when the mortar body is not pointed directly at the target. So during the upward part of the mortar flight before apogee, the mortar pointing error becomes smaller, so the circle inscribed uh, by the target becomes smaller. At apogee, the elevation autopilot is activated, and in this simulation, the roll rate is reduced to zero in an underdamped step response. The, the underdamped, it could be any step response, but the underdamped response is intentional to visually, visually illustrate the principles. And here is the roll breaking uh, position step response for the roll breaking maneuver just shown on the CCD array. After roll braking is complete, the autopilot com rotates the mortar body so the elevation autopilot operates in the vertical plane, which contains the gravity vector. And this way, gravity is not coupled to both the azimuth and elevation autopilots. So now let's launch the mortar and see what happens. After roll positioning is complete, the target is at the vertical center of the CCD array and the azimuth elevation guidance flies the mortar to a target intercept. And this is a graph of the, of the uh, roll breaking and roll positioning phases just shown on the CCD array. Now, I suppose the roll alignment phase is not strictly necessary. It is possible to design the azimuth and elevation autopilots so that the gravity vector is operating in some, uh, is, affects those two channels in some trigonometric way. Uh, but it does simplify the autopilot design and by keeping them separate so that the roll alignment phase means that the gravity vector is only operating in the elevation channel. Um, and also, I suppose it uh, could be uh, it's possible to combine the roll breaking and the roll alignment phases into a single phase. But again, it's in my mind, it simplifies the autopilot design and certainly the debugging process to get a working autopilot. Um, now, whether the uh, non-recurring engineering, the NRE cost of combining those two phases is worth it or not, well, I mean, if they were combined, it's possible, if they were combined, it's possible that uh, there could be overall reduced drag during the flight, which would translate to a longer effective range for a guided round. But whether, the, whether that's cost effective or not, would you spend $300,000, a half a million dollars or whatever it is in NRE to get an extra two meters of range? Uh, that doesn't seem to be to be valuable for money. But if it was 200 to 300 meters range or more, then it might be. 
but that would require a study and I have not looked into that at all. Uh, but um, it, it could be looked into. And uh, this concludes um, an overview of the role autopilot for um, uh, the auto overall autopilot design for a guided mortar retrofit head.